thank you for joining me so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a wedding dress for Polly with its beautiful flouncy scalloped edge skirt a little bow on the back I'll also be showing you how to make her little posy along with her two little hair clips and her veil so yeah let's get cracking Okay, so onto the bodice first. So I've cut my satin bodice front, my two satin bodice backs, my poly cotton bodice front, and my two poly cotton bodice backs. And then for the lace, which is the overlay on top of the satin, I've just cut a piece without doing the shaping on it. And I can line that up on the satin so that I can get my two little flowers that I want centralized just there in the middle of the pattern piece and then I will once I'm happy with the positioning I will just pop some pins in all the way around just to hold that in place where I want it and then I'm going to go and sew all the way around the edge of that bodice piece around the complete thing and then once I've done that I'll snip away the excess of the lace doing it that way and not cutting the lace piece out first and lining it up onto your satin bodice piece um, you can get it to be symmetrically placed with a little design of your lace so again pin that all the way around both both pieces and go and sew all the way around the edge and then snip off the excess okay so I've sewn around the edge of the bodice lace on top of the satin and then the next thing I need to do is to align the two satin pieces together so the two shoulder shoulder seams pop a pin in there same with this side, pin in there, repeat for the poly cotton, I always um, trace out my pattern pieces using a lead pencil because I'm always going to snip that seam allowance back anyway so I will be removing um, the lead pencil okay so shoulder seams matched and aligned on the satin lace bodice section and the same on the poly cotton section now we're going to go and sew along the top edge there of the shoulder seams on both pieces shoulder seams sewn and ironed nice and flat so um, open the seam up iron it flat and the same for the uh, lining poly cotton and on there you'll probably be able to just see my stitch, my basted in stitch that I did all the way around the edge. Okay, so next thing for us to do is to join these two pieces together. So I put my lace satin down and then I put my poly cotton on the top. And the first thing I do is I, I match the shoulder seams there on one side. So just match the shoulder seam one side first, pop in a pin and then match the other shoulder seam and pop in another pin it just helps to keep that seam allowance that you've ironed down nice and flat and then ease it out to fit the rest. Add some pins one in the centre front there and at the centre back and then we're going to sew 
from the centre back, up, around the neck and into the other centre back. And once I've sewn that, I will snip that back with some pinking shears um, and I'll be back. Sewn all the way around and pinked all the way around. And I've also just snipped back that corner on both sides there. Right, now to turn the right way round. So take out the centre back bits first and then use your dotting tool just to ease out that seam right the way along. It just helps to ease out that ridge, makes it much easier for ironing. Okay, so that's all nicely eased out. Give it a little gentle pull on the stitch line. And then that is now ready for pressing. Now I iron from the back first and as I press I just roll that down a little bit as I press each piece individually. So I'll do that front section there but as I roll it down I can see that I've just got a little bit of lace showing, just a tiny weeny bit. So I'll roll that down, hold that in place and then I get my little travel iron and I iron that bit and then I do the same for the backs. All nicely ironed, nice and flat. So now I want to keep these two pieces of fabric together. So I'm just going to place some pins along the bottom edge, up the side of the arm seam, round the armhole. Along the bottom edge. Just keeping it nice and flat. And I'm going to continue to do another line of basting stitches just to keep those two pieces of fabric, two sections of fabric together. So all the way along the bottom edge, up the side seams, around the armhole down the other uh, side seam, along the lower bottom edge of the front, up, around, down and along. So that's going to keep that whole lot as one piece. So there it is, all sewn together around the edges. It's much easier to work with when it's just as one piece of fabric. So yeah, so on to the sleeves next. So I've done the same here um, to the sleeves as what I did to the bodice. So I've cut the sleeve out in the satin and then I've cut a larger piece in the lace and I've laid it on and you know jigged it around to get the, uh, the little flowers identical on each piece. And the same with the two sleeve bands. So now I'm going to go and sew around the complete edge with a little basting stitch just to keep these two pieces of fabric together. Okay so I've sewn my gathering uh, stitches on my sleeves two rows um, along the gathered top edge and along the lower edge where the sleeve bands go in and I've used red thread for my needle thread and I've used blue thread for my bobbin thread. Okay so let's pop these into the bodice. So the first thing you need to do is just around the armhole edge if you just make some snips just a, a series of little tiny snips just around that edge that just helps to ease out the shape of the arm into the sleeve top so you can see you can sort of stretch it out straighter take your sleeve right sides facing so lace against lace find your central point so just fold your sleeve in half give it a little pinch 
there's my center point and I'm now putting that center point onto the little seam there on the shoulder so line that up and pop in a pin okay so we like that so far then take this outside edge of the sleeve so where you've got that straight edge down there you're going to line that straight edge up with the straight edge on the bodice so you twist it and that fits on there pop in a pin do the same the other side so the bodice straight edge down there to that sleeve straight edge match them together in goes the pin then you can start fitting the sleeve into the armhole so we're just moving that round so next I'm going to pop a pin where my gathering thread starts just pop a pin in there and then this area here is what I need to gather into that armhole where those little um, snips are so I take my two red threads which are my needle threads I leave my blues alone I don't pull on my blues and I just pull up on those reds gather it along keep gathering until I can feel that it fits and then just anchor it off around that pin that I've put in and then just ease those gathers out so that they're nice and even and I just put one more pin in there repeat for the other side so I've got my pin in there at the side in alignment I put another pin in where my gather stitches start I take the two red threads and I pull up on those, not the blue threads, just the red threads so I pull up on those reds and then this time I should be able to pull it nice and taut so that when I stretch that out like that that gathering section of the sleeve is now fitting into that armhole wrap those around there so they don't move and then just ease those gathers out so they're nice and evenly spaced and then just put a pin in there so what you have is you've got your armhole curve which has got little snips in so that I can stretch it out straight my sleeve sides to the side of my bodice are pinned in place and my gathering pins, my gathering starts where the gathering stitches start and then I just pull up and gather all that in there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and sew a line of stitches all the way along here in between those two gather threads so they're coming all the way along there like that around that corner to there and then once I've done that then I can zigzag or overlock um, that seam allowance off okay so I've sewn so you should be able to see my stitch line so there it is there starts there goes all the way through there right the way around to the side there and then to get rid of those gathers I take my two red threads and I just pull on them give them a pull through don't touch the blues because if you touch the blues and you pull the blues then you'll lock that thread and it won't, you won't be able to take those gathers out so now all I'm left with is the blues in there I'll just grab hold of that, those and do the same pull those out okay so all my gathering threads are removed 
my stitches in place turn it over when you've done that as well just to ch just to check that you have got a good seam allowance all the way through and it's not slipped and moved okay so now I'm going to go and overlock that seam allowance or you can just trim it back and zigzag it so here's the bodice so far so we've got the top half of our sleeve sewn on we've overlocked that edge and I've also ironed the sleeve flat and I iron my sleeve seam towards the sleeve so just iron all the way around there along the top and down into that side so the next thing to do is to take our sleeve bands so we've sewn the, the lace on um, and we've stitched around it I folded it in half and I've sewn it together along that raw edge so it's now one piece so what you're going to do is you're going to find the center point of that gather edge of the lower bottom of the sleeve so just take a mark put, put a little pin in there so we know that's the center point and then our center point of our sleeve band I never pin it because I can just do a rough guess of where it is it's about there so I'm going to pop my pin, my centre pin, in there. And then I'm going to gather that lower edge of the sleeve to fit the sleeve band. So the outside edge of the sleeve goes onto the outside edge of the sleeve band. Pop a pin in there where the gathers start. and just pull up on the red thread pull up on those two red threads to fit that sleeve band, the half of the sleeve band secure it off same the other side so take the edge of the sleeve which is here line that up with the sleeve band pop in a pin put another pin where my gathers start take my two red threads and pull up together that side then if I pull it back I can get those gathers to fit nicely onto that sleeve band secure that off and then just eke out those um, gathers just to make sure that they're nice and evenly placed just put one more pin in for luck ease these gathers out so that they're nice and evenly spaced another pin in then I'm going to sew along there in between those two gather stitches all the way through now just a little tip, when I'm on my machine and I start off and I'm coming along when I get to here, when I get to my gathering thread I always take that needle, out, take that pin out and pull those gathering threads to the side so basically my machine foot is coming along here, I stop here I take that pin out, I pull my gather stitches that side and I carry on sewing because the only problem is if you go over the gathering stitches when they're all in a little bunch like that sometimes it's a bit difficult to get them out at the end so for all my gatherings when I hit the gather I just remove um, the pin and pull the gathering stitches away away to the right okay so I'm going to go and sew those along there okay so I've sewn along there in between the two gather threads I'll just remove my red threads pull out my blue threads and then that's ready for overlocking or zigzagging which I've done on this side so that's that little tiny 
um, arm sleeve band. So the next thing I'm going to do is take it to my iron and I'm going to iron that sleeve band with the sleeve, with the sleeve band facing upwards um, into the sleeve. So that's the sleeves completely in, sleeve bands on, pressed and ironed and that seems going up towards the sleeve. And so that leaves us just to finish this bodice. Okay, so you can see that you've got you've got your two side seams of your bodice and you've got your two side seams of your sleeve. So you match those two together. So with the, the, the uh, seam either side there match that on pop a pin in take the side seam of the bodice down put another pin in there and then the seam from the sleeves match that in and a pin in there so now you're going to sew through the side seam of the bodice into the side seam of the sleeve. So I've sewn that side seam and I've overlocked the edge. I've turned it right side out. And I've also ironed that seam flat. So I ironed that, that side seam towards the centre back and the same for the sleeve seam towards the centre back. So there you have your sweet little bodice. And then when you're cutting your lace you need to find your straight edge because you haven't got a pattern piece in the pattern you've just got the the length of the piece that you need to cut. Now so what I would always recommend you do with your lace is you cut it into a straight line. Now normally lace has got a pattern that you can follow so you can see this little flower that's appearing all the way along here. So what I would do first to get my straight edge is I just go through the lace, cutting through that little flower pattern there. Then I know that I'm getting my straight edge, if you can see it. So there is my nice straight edge there. So I cut that length along to my desired length that I need. I also cut off the salvage from the lace so oh if I can find it started cutting it already so you can see with the lace you've got a section of the lace that hasn't really got any pattern to it so you want to cut off the salvage so again I'm just cutting up following that little lace design there on that little flower so I'm bringing that up straight and then look at the pattern, see what size you need. So there's the size that I need, I've already cut that out. I've already made a little snip there. So then what you simply do is you follow your little lace design. So I'm cutting off just the bottom half of that little flower there. I'm going to cut that through so it's quite easy to follow. Just follow the lace pattern. And then that's given me my, my piece of lace um, that I need for the overskirt. Now for the overskirt, you need to cut it in the length that you need. Then you need to cut a second piece exactly the same. So you've got two pieces at the length that it says in the pattern. And then take one piece, make sure it's equally folded over in half. And then take your scissors and just cut up through that fold. So now you've got one long piece with a fold and then you've got exactly the same again but that one's been cut in half. So those are the two back pieces and that's the front piece. Now when you're looking at your lace, depending on what lace you get, if you look at it you'll see that the good side of the lace is got a slight raised edge to it especially if you're using like a corded lace like this 
you can see that that's slightly raised there underneath it's more flatter so I always know that that's my best side and the flatter side is the wrong side so uh, the three pieces are sewn together so you've got a longer front piece two shorter back sections so they're all sewn together I've attached the thin lace along the bottom edge all the way around and I've sewn three rows of gathering stitches um, along the top so you've got your, your two normal rows of gather stitches but then you also need to do a third row which is probably about four centimeters down and the reason why you do this is because you're going to gather that up and that's going to keep the dress flat as you attach the underskirt um, because if you didn't do that one there um, when you come to attach the underskirt on top of this one you'll find that all the gathers of this will get in the way so I just put this temporary line of gather stitches in below the main two um, gather stitches when you do your gathers just hook that back bit over so that's caught into the, the first part of the gather stitches and then you need to work out where the scallops of the dress are going so refer to your pattern it gives you the guidelines for um, how to um, put your pins in for where they need to be and what we're going to do is we're going to sew um, a line of gather stitches along here in white cotton in white thread and we're going to use that to pull up um, to get the, the scallopy effect okay so I've done all my um, scallop gather lines don't know whether you can see they're up here like this and I've got the thread at the top there ready to pull through um, to make the gathers so those six are done on there so first things first find your center point on your front bodice and pop in a pin then find the center point on the skirt so just fold the two together run it through there's my center point there so I will pin that in place then divide again so find my quarter point so that's my back edge there line it up with the pin that I've just put in and that's my next point there that is going on the side seam and then the back edge it's got that bit turned over already so that lines straight up with the back edge of the bodice okay so my three pins are in place for this half of the bodice then I take my three lots of gather, gathering threads so I've got my two at the top taking my red threads and I've got my one slightly down take my red thread on that leave the blues behind and all three I hold on to all three and I pull these all at the same time all at once just keep pulling through and then that's all going to gather that skirt so keep pulling you can see I still need to gather some more so I pull again hold on to three tightly still need to gather some more so I pull on and now I know that my gathers are fitting the, un the, the uh, hot, that half section of the bodice so 
So I can take all those gathering threads, those three threads there, and I will just wrap the three around that pin that I put in. So that's not going anywhere. Forget about the blues. And then I need to even all these gathers out so that they're nicely placed. So I can see I've got a real clear bit here. But I've got a load of bunching of gathers here. So I just ease it all through. Just keep easing through until you're happy that all those gathers are nice and evenly placed. Okay, yeah, so I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to put in one more pin here. Another pin here. And then I'm going to continue to do this side. So I've got my halfway mark. I'm going to find my quarterway mark. So the back goes against where that pin is. There's my quarterway mark. Which is which is actually where your seam is. So pop that on there. Pop in a pin. Take the back. Align that with the, the side back, centre back of the bodice. Pop in a pin. Then take your three threads, your, your needle thread. So in my case it's my red threads. I've got my three threads held tightly together. And I pull through. Keep pulling, pulling through the gathers. I think I'm there. I'm just going to pull that through there. Yeah, so that's nicely. So that's the bodice is nice and flat. And the gathers are all to on top there. So I'm just going to secure that off, those three threads. Oh, and get hold of them. On that top pin. And then I'm going to move those gathers along so that they're all evenly spaced. You can see I've got no gathers there, but I've got a whole bunch in here, so I just pull that through until they're all nicely evenly spaced. Same with that bit there. And then I can put one more pin in there. And one more pin in there. Okay, so that is the skirt gathered on to the bodice. So I'm now going to go and sew along there in between the two gathering stitches all the way along. So I've sewn along there. I'm going to leave my gathering stitches in and put the top skirt, the underskirt on and then I'm going to remove the gathering stitches because that just helps to keep that flat and you can see why I've done that second, that third row of gathering stitches here it's just keeping all this flat so that when I put my underskirt on I haven't got the bulk of all the gathers in the way which might get hooked up underneath so yeah that third row of gathers is there basically just to keep all that laying nice and flat so when you're cutting out your satin piece, if you buy your satin from us, we tear it from the roll. Okay, it's much easier because the um, the underskirt 
um, is it's got the main part and then it's got the frill it's much easier to tear it into the length that you want it rather than to try to cut it because satin does tend to slip so for the frill you are going to need your width of the frill so what you would do is you make a snip for the width of the frill just make a big snip and then all you do is just tear along that right the way through the piece of fabric and that piece that you've torn off there that will be for the frill of the underskirt now it does curl where you've torn it but that's absolutely fine because that will iron out if you cut it about a centimetre bigger than what you need once you've ironed it out you can always just then snip off um, that edge if you so desire so that's your frill then the main part of the petticoat uh, of the underskirt you do exactly the same again so take the size that you need measure it out on your tape measure or your yardstick so that's the size that I need for my underskirt top part of the skirt and I don't need the full width of this I'm just going to tear it along a bit because this this end bit here is what you're going to need for sleeves and everything so see what the the length of the piece of the satin underskirt is so I'm going to measure that out and that measures to about there so then so I went pretty close to where I want it let's get rid of my old stick put that on my lap so then I'm going to then take my scissors and cut out down there so this piece here this is for the the satin underskirt and then that first bit there that you cut off which was the full length of the fabric that's the frill again it will iron out that little curly edge will iron out and then what you have left because we sell this satin in half meter pieces so what you have left is you have all that section there and that little bit there and into there you can fit your bodice pieces your sleeves and your back bow okay I mean if you prefer to cut it rather than rip it off the uh, off the piece of fabric then that's entirely up to you but I because satin is so slippy I just prefer to um, to, to tear it um, from the piece so for the underskirt frill first thing you need to do is neaten the lower edge just the bottom edge so I've overlocked you can overlock or you can zigzag and also neaten the sides the two end sides of the uh, lower frill so next I've just turned that little uh, edge up the overlocked or zigzagged edge up into a little hem sewn all the way along there and ironed it nice and flat and then with the lace part of the underskirt frill again this will be in the three sections so two smaller pieces at the back big a bit in the front and then a smaller piece at the back there left open on that back seam I've just sewn a very small piece of narrow lace right the way along the bottom edge Let's turn it out the right way for you so yeah small piece of narrow lace right the way along the bottom edge and then what you do is you take your satin frill and your lace frill and you line it up so that the lace is just sitting on the edge of that satin frill pop some pins in all the way along you might have to trim back your satin slightly because if you tore it from the 
um, piece of fabric and once you've ironed it out it might be slightly um, wider than what you needed but as long as your lace edge is just touching the edge of that satin frill pin it all the way along and then you are going to put in two rows of gather stitches right the way across right the way through there right to the end so we have got our frill And we've got our main skirt piece and the skirt has got the um, gathering threads at the top we've overlocked or zigzagged or whatever down each side and the gathering threads you've got that back piece is just hooked over on itself okay so I find my center point of my skirt which is there, give it a little pinch, pop in a pin, find the quarter point but bearing in mind that's going to be seam there so my quarter point is there, same the other side, I've got my seam allowance there, take that up to there so there's my quarter point there. And then I take my frill and I find my halfway point, which is there. And I put that on my halfway point on the main skirt piece. And then I find my quarter point, which is there, attach that there, and then my end, which is there. And that butts right onto the end, the two overlocking edges butt right on together. Put one pin in. And then a second pin in. Okay, so this time I'm pulling up on the blue thread. Because that's the one that's uppermost. So pulling up on my blue thread, pulling it through. going until it fits the skirt, the main skirt piece. Okay so I've probably overgathered so I can just ease it back. To fit. And now my gathered frill fits the main part of the skirt. Anchor those threads off so they're not going to go anywhere and then even all these gathers out along that quarter section there so make sure they're all laying nice and um, evenly spaced, nice and flat. I'm going to put a couple of pins in there Same with this side, even those gathers out. Yeah, that looks good. Two pins in. Okay, so that's half of the skirt done. And now I will do the other half.
Okay, that's looking good. Fasten that off so it's not going to go anywhere. Evenly space out those gathers. Couple of pins in there. And then finally this little bit here. Now I'm ready to sew all the way along here in between the two gathering threads. Okay, so that's sewn and overlocked or you could zigzag. I've also ironed it out. That's been now been ironed nice and flat all the way along. So the next thing is we're going to attach this underskirt to the bodice. So I find my center point which is there. Find my quarter point which is there. And this side is there. And then I take my bodice with the top skirt on. Find my halfway point. I normally just do it by eye. I'd say that's my halfway point there. So my halfway point on the underskirt is there. Pop a pin in. And then my quarter point is going where my side seam is. So that's going to go on there. And then the back, obviously, at the back, goes on there. Just put in one more pin. And then I'm going to take my two red threads on this under skirt, so it's that one and that one. And I'm going to pull up on that. Hasn't got so much, so, as many gathers as the uh, top skirt. The under skirt is less gathered. So pull that through wrap that off to hold in place, eke out those gathers so that they're nice and even, add one more pin and the same again and can you see by me leaving those gathers in to the on the top skirt it's made it easier to position this underskirt because that top skirt all the gathers are all still laying flat. Hard part is getting the gathers out after you've sewn this next bit. So now I'm going to line up side seam with that quarter point. And then the back seam here. Move all those threads that way. Take this back seam and my two red threads there. Line up on there. One pin in. Second pin in. And pull up on those two reds. Okay, 
and wrap those two off. Smooth it out, smooth out those gathers. Add another pin. Smooth out these gathers. So now I'm ready to sew the underskirt onto the bodice. Again, in between the two gathering threads. Okay, so I've sewn through there. So now it's time to take the gatherings out. So halfway along, I'm going to just cut open the cut cut the gather thread. So that's that top red thread. And then find my red thread here. Give it a pull. Find the other red thread here. Give it a pull. Go over to this side. Find the red thread. Give it a pull. So all the red is out. So now I can pull my blue, but make sure I pull my blue from the top skirt, from the underskirt, sorry, and not the one underneath because I haven't taken the red thread out of that yet. So I'm going to pull that one. Can be a bit fiddly when you've got so many layers of gathers to get out. That one. Okay, so I've got all my gather thread out now from my um, top, uh, from my underskirt. So now I can do the the top skirt. So I'm going to go find the middle point. If you cut, if you cut that bit in the middle there, it makes it easier to pull from that side and then to pull from that side. Go up underneath. Actually, it's easier to see it from underneath. So I'm going to snip. Red thread there, oh that was already snipped. Snip red thread there and snip red thread there. So now I just want to pull only on red threads. So I think all my red thread has gone. So now I can pull on my blue. That's that one that was lower down, that's coming out nicely. And then I can pull on these two. I hope they come out because they're quite close to the stitch line. So that one's come out nicely. Then this one here, this is the one that's really close to the stitch line. So this one I might have to actually use my needle to, to pull it out. So where there was a wheel there was a way, I had some real stubborn bits so I had to use my tweezers just to pull out some, some of the little bits that um, I couldn't grab with these nails. So yeah, all my threads are out now. So you just turn it over and just have a look at the seams and make sure that all your gather threads have gone. Okay, so we're getting there. This lovely dress. Okay, so we've now got the underskirt with the frill on the bottom, with the overskirt, which is going to be scalloped up. Okay, so I've overlocked that inside seam there, the gather seam. So that's all nicely overlocked and I have given it a little iron just along this edge here all the way through. Go careful if you're using lace, well you probably are using lace because you don't want to scorch it. 
So I always use a very, very uh, low heat on my iron. Okay, so next thing to do is to join those back seams. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to do the lace. So forget about the underskirt, we're just going to do the lace one first. So line it up at the bottom. Pop in a pin. A few pins coming up. To about there. And that just gives enough gap there um, for Polly to get in and out of her dress. So yeah, just a little little gap there. So I'm going to sew down here now, and then I'm going to iron that flat. Okay, so we've sewn that back seam. Little opening at the top there, and I've ironed that seam out flat. Okay, so now to sew the underskirt back seam, same as the top skirt back seam. So we're just going to line up the frill Pop a pin in there, bring it up, to about there, leave a gap, a little gap for her get, to get in and out of. And then this bottom bit, just treat this as two equal parts, so you've got that side and that side. Pin in, another pin in, and I'm now going to go and sew all the way down there, and exactly the same, iron it out flat. Okay, so that's that back seam sewn and ironed out flat. Turning it in the right way. So you can now see that the back is all nicely sewn together. And all that's left to do now are the finishing touches. So we're going to add a little bow on the back. We're going to scallop up all the, the bottom edge of the dress, put a couple of pop press studs on and add some lovely adornments, some little flowers um, to the scallops. Okay, so now we're going on to the bow for the back of the dress. But before I do that, I just want to show you a quick tip for sewing on your press studs. So you have three clear press studs on the back of the, the dress. And they can be a little bit fiddly because they do tend to ping everywhere. Um, so what I like to do is I like to keep um, the press studs on the uh, little plastic rod that it comes in. And just lay that on top of the fabric where you want to sew your press stud and then that way you've got all the um, the rod to hold on to rather than just trying to hold on to that little piddly um, press stud which can ping everywhere so just hold that onto the fabric using your thumb to hold on to the rod and then it's so much easier to sew on because you've got something to grip onto so yeah just a, a little tip there on how I sew my press studs on to my outfit. So when I've done two holes, so that's four stitches, I then break it off the band. So just grab hold of the band, oh the little rod, sorry, snap it off and then you're already secured on with two holes so it's much easier to sew the remaining two holes on. So onto the uh, bow, so you've got two pieces for your bow, you've got your main bow section and you've got your bow band which goes around the middle. So the first thing you're going to do is just turn up that bottom edge on the bow band. Can be a bit fiddly especially with satin as it frays. 
and you're just going to sew it along the bottom edge there and the same on that side. So that's the long, long side of the bow band. Okay, so sew along there and sew along there. So that's sewn along both those two bottom edges. Then I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to sew that seam together. So I've now got my two edges at the bottom. And then with the main bow piece, I'm going to fold that in half. That's folding in half lengthways. I'm going to sew along here. And I'm going to stop there and stop there. So sew along, stop, sew along, stop. So they've got a little open in there, I've sewn down there, left a little gap, sewn down there. So then open it out. And open that seam out. I have snipped that seam allowance back just very slightly. So open that out. Pop in a pin. We're going to sew that side and the other side. Okay, so that's all pinned in. So we're going to sew down there, sew down there, just trim that seam allowance off. And then with this, we're going to turn this in the right way around. So I just pop my hemostats through, grab hold of the top there, lock it on, and ease it through. Here it comes. Unlock them, and then that's now a nice little tube or a little bow band with turned in edges, a bit fiddly, that we can use to wrap around our bow. So I'll give that a, a nice iron. So I've got my seam centrally placed at the back there, so I'm going to give that a little iron. Okay, so I've ironed that nice and flat. I've sewn down my sides, I've trimmed the seams and I've just cut off the angles at the bottom there, the square edges at the bottom, and I've ironed that seam flat. And then you can see my little hole. That's the little hole that we left um, when we sewed that centre seam. So we're just going to turn that through. So yeah, use your dotting tool just to run through those seams and when you've done that, iron it flat. I folded it in half with my seam running through the centre that way, folded it in half and ironed it flat. Then open up your bow and you've now got a line to follow where that iron line is. And we're going to run two rows of gathering threads through there. So on my long stitch on my machine, I'm going to come down here, just the, just the side of the ironed line, square off at the bottom, and then come back up again. Leave the tails hanging, two lines sewn, one going down, one going down there, two stitches at the bottom, straight back up again. Okay, so now to gather the bow, so take the two top threads, and just pull them through. Then when you've gathered and pulled as much as you can go with those two top threads, grab hold of the two bottom threads and pull those and then tie the two together. Tie into a knot a couple of times. 
and then take those threads so pull the bow out so that's the back side because I've got my seam there turn over to the front side pull the bow out take the, the threads and just wrap it around the centre of that bow and then that way you can pull it tighter and get that gathering really tight so pull around a couple of times to the back and then we're going to pop a needle in there and we're going to sew that through so I've pulled up my gathers and I've tied those um, four threads off and I've reattached some more sewing thread and this is the back still so you can see you've got your seam there so take your bow band lay it on at the front and just pin that in place so you know it's not going to move then take one section of the bow band over the top and stitch that in place and then bring the other piece over, this piece that's hanging there, bring that over to the back as well and then sew that in place, do one side first so that it's sewn onto the other side of the bow band get through to the other side then do the other side and then when the two sides are done just sew through that middle bit fasten off take the pin out at the front and there you have your lovely little back bow. Close my press studs on my dress. And then I'm going to get my hot glue gun. And with the overlap inside there, just at this bottom bit here, I'm going to put some glue and I'm going to press my bow on. Okay, so on with the glue. Just put a blob all the way around there. Take my bow and press it on. Hold it nice and firmly. You can of course sew it on if you don't have to use a, a glue gun with hot glue you can sew it on. But I just find it's much easier just to glue it on. So there you have your bow and that's not going anywhere. You can still open the dress in and out there because the uh, bow is sewn onto the overlapping piece. Okay so the next thing we are going to do is we're going to do these little scallops okay so now the fun bit onto the scallops so we sewed our lines of our gathering threads all the way through our top lace uh, skirt layer so we're going to take I'm just going to do this front one I'm going to take our thread pull both those threads through so they're both appearing on the top side take one of the threads and pull that through right the way down to the bottom so that's pulled nice and tight take the second thread underneath give that a pull that's going to lock that in place do a knot a couple of times and 
and then just take your needle thread that onto your needle and sew those two ends in okay so I'm just going to sew that so that I know that that little scallopy edge isn't going anywhere now back in the 80s when I had my bridal shop this was my most popular dress so this is really a real 1980s style dress the meringue type which I thought would be absolutely perfect for Polly and yeah back in the 80s I was knocking these out full adult size I was, I was doing roughly making five a week and I could make an adult size dress like this in two and a half hours so yeah we were really really knocking them out we were selling our wedding dresses all over Europe I had a team of 40 dressmakers working for me so yeah this dress really brings back the memories of when we had Strelly and I was just constantly making these dresses these scallop edge dresses which I absolutely loved so I knew I've lost my needle I knew that when I met, wanted to make a dress uh, a wedding dress for Polly I knew it had to be the style that I'm really familiar with and the ones that I used to make uh, back in the 1980s that lovely meringue style so I pulled that through and then I'm just going to fasten that off so that I know that scallop isn't going anywhere so I will continue to do the other four because there's six all together so that's two done and as you can see that's scalloping up really nice and it comes up just to where the, um, the frill um, meets the satin underneath yeah so that's lovely so I'm going to continue to do the other four and then we're going to come back and we're going to put some lovely adornments on so my scallops are all done, all six of them all the way round now it's time for me to get my adornments ready so I'm using these lovely little white flowers with the little pearls on them really pretty but I need to cut off um, that wire end because I don't want that on there so I'm using my wire cutters just to snip off that end don't use your dressmaking scissors because you will blunt them and then with that, that end there I'm just going to fold that back in on itself and then that's now ready for me to glue on to my scallop so I'm going to do that with all six well there's seven actually because I'm putting one in the front on the front bodice there so I'm going to do that to all of those and I'm also going to be using this um, ribbon as well so I need some lengths to hang down there okay so there's my ruched scallop and I want to put my ribbon on first so I'm going to put on a little dab of hot glue pop my ribbon on and some more hot glue on top of the ribbon Fold that ribbon down, press on, that's not going anywhere, this is where you get glue all over your nails. Then I'm going to add some more glue, a bigger blob this time, and I'm going to take my little pearl adornment, pearl and flower adornment and stick that on there and hold that down nice and firm so there you have your lovely little 
flowery adornment and then with that ribbon I'm just going to snip that off to the bottom edge of the dress and I will continue to work all the way around the other five. So all the scallop adornments are done all the way around on the six uh, scallops and now I'm just going to put one um, on the centre uh, middle of the dress. So I've put a pin in to where I want my um, my little adornment and I'm just going to take my air erasable marker pen just make a little dot there so that I know that's the right place. I've got a longer piece of ribbon for the front. So I take my hot glue gun, pop in a little dot, put my ribbon on, press it down, another little bit of glue fold that ribbon over and press down and then take my little flower a bigger blob of glue and place on my lovely little flower Press down and hold tight. There we have our lovely little central flower. I'm just going to cut that ribbon back a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the veil and headdress. So onto the veil. Now this is bridal um, chul, bridal veiling. You won't be able to use a, a net fabric. Um, it just be too stiff so do get a good quality um, bridal veil in so following your pattern um, dimensions and sizes cut your piece of veiling uh, to what it states and then make the fold you'll see in the pattern um, where to make the fold and then put in a series of pins all the way along that fold line and then <laughs> it's difficult because they do they do want to fall out and then take it to your machine and right on the edge of that fold do um, a row of gather stitches so uh, just a normal sort of I don't know one centimetre seam allowance from the edge of that fold and just run a row of gathering stitches right the way through um, the width of that veiling. So I've run my gathering thread all the way through that fold and when I started my gathering thread I used a two, uh, two millimetre stitch length backwards and forwards just to anchor that in then I changed my stitch length to a 4.5 ran that all the way through to the other end and left the tail okay so now we're going to take the top thread and we are going to pull on this to pull through all those gathers don't pull the bottom thread because otherwise it will lock it yeah, don't put it yet, you will in a minute. Okay, so ease all those gathers through. Right up to the start point. Take it up to the start. And just start making sure that those gathers are all nicely spaced and they're not buckling up. I'm just feeding them all through, pushing as far as I can go. Hold on to that thread, don't let it slip through. Okay, so there's my start point just there. And there is my gather right the way up to there. So then, hold on to that, take the thread underneath. give that a pull that is now going to lock that gathering stitch in place tie that in a knot and that three times leave that thread on because we'll use that 
for attaching it to the pony band. Okay, so they are all gathered, ready to attach to the pony band. So you've got one short piece and then you've got one really long piece. So turn it over so that your long piece is uppermost. Then refasten your needle on to the outside edge here. And then you're going to take your pony band and you're going to sew that on to the veil. So just using little slip stitches, go under the pony band and through the veil. Under the pony band and through the veil. under and stitch into the veil and you're going to do that keep working that all the way along the pony band right to the other end okay so I've sewn all the way along Now you can either leave it like that or we can put a piece of ribbon on there, hot glue some ribbon on which I will show you. Um, it's not going to notice because by the time her ponytail goes into the back there and when her veil is down the back it's going to look like that and when she brings it over the front over to her face you're not going to see it either. So it's entirely up to you whether you want to do the um, hot gluing um, some satin ribbon on that piece um, or not. I've got my piece of satin ribbon cut ready and I've just used a hot flame on each of the outside edges just, just to stop that from um, fraying. So I take my hot glue and I'm just going to put a line all the way along the top of that pony band. Take my satin ribbon and just pop it on there. Press that down nice and firm. And then turn it over. And with my hot glue gun Just make sure that you've got your fold okay and it's going to go over okay. So just take my hot glue gun and add some more glue along here. And then just fold that over into the glue. Give it a press. Nice and firm. So there you have your pony band covered. So it's entirely up to you whether you do that, that bit or not. You can keep it with the pony band because you're not going to see the, see the pony band anyway. But it's just that when her veil is back, it just gives that nice little edge there. Um, on her head. So now onto her little floral head clips, hair clips. Okay, they're on an alligator clip, so they just clip in, slide into her hair from either side to meet together, and they just sit nicely alongside the veil. Okay, so first things first, 
So we're using these alligator clips, but you can't hot glue the flowers straight onto the metal because it just won't stick. So you need to make it like a little platform. So I'm using a piece of felt. If you haven't got uh, any felt, you could use a um, piece of cardboard, a piece of card, white card, something like that. You just need to sit the alligator clip onto the felt just so that it gives it a little platform um, to stick the glue to stick flowers onto. Okay, so I've hot glued that one on already. So now it's time for me to layer up my flowers. So that hair clip is going in that way and that hair clip is going in that way. So I've worked out how my flowers are going to sit. Okay, so my first one is going to be this one. So glue that one on there. And then I want that little tiny baby one just above there. A little tiny Diddy Rose. Pop that in there. Hold it on till it sets. Then I'm going to put my big rose on. Push that a little bit, that's it. So that's going to sit in there. And then on that sidey bit there, I'm going to have this one of these. This is what she's got on her dress. So I'm going to pop that in there. Put them facing that way, those little pearls. And then I want move that little petal there. Put the other purple flower in there. And then I'm going to put that little tiny weeny rosebud just on that edge there. Okay. So that's hair clip number one. And now I'm going to copy that for the other side. Just so cute. So two little hair clips and they will just sit either side, um, right in the front of her hair, clipped in either side in front of the veil. Okay, so next job, final job, is to make her bouquet. So this is a little posy bouquet we're going to make. And this one um, belongs to this set. Okay, so I've got my flowers, selection of flowers. Um, I've got my florist tape. You could do it without florist tape. You could possibly use Sellotape, I don't know how well that would, would stick, um, but yeah, you could try um, sellotape. So, first thing, we're just going to layer the flowers up really. So, I've kept all my stalks, my stems on all the flowers. So, first thing I do is just get my florist tape started on one, and then I just start bringing in and loading up all the flowers. no particular order because I tend to tweak it out once they're all in there so I'll put in a few let's give that a little wrap let's add a little one these little ones have only got really short stems on them. So we really need to make sure that they get wrapped in tightly. Okay, 
Now when I had the bridal shop I used to always make the um, bridal bouquets as well, and little posies. So yeah, it was the full um, kit and caboodle for all the brides. My, mum, my dad had the, um, well he had two Mercedes wedding cars. So he used to go out and do all the, uh, the bridal chauffeuring. When me, my mum and my sister were either in the shop or I was at home pounding away on the sewing machine making the wedding dresses. Bridesmaids dresses, christening robes, communion dresses. That seems many moons ago now, that's 40 odd years ago. So yeah, time flies when you're having fun. So yeah, this making this ensemble for our dear little Polly has certainly brought back the memories of the days of Strelly collection. And I've even got a couple of my customers that actually purchased goods from the shop back in the 80s. So a hello and a shout out to Sue and Debbie. So they remember me from all those years ago when I was running Strelly. I think, I think Debbie had wedding dresses for her daughters, bridesmaids dresses, holy communion dresses. She probably had christening robes. So yeah, those were... So those were the good old days until I finally became burnt out with sewing and I didn't pick up a needle for about 25 years after that until Polly became, until Polly was born. So layering it all up, have I got my three of those in? Yeah. Add some of these little tiny ones. So just layering it all up, all the way around. This florist tape's really easy to buy, it's really cheap. Just put onto um, Amazon florist tape. It's a sticky type, so it's, it sort of sticks onto itself. A little look. Very good, once I've tweaked that around. So then I continue down with my florist tape. rolling it in between my finger and thumb and then I want to snip off the bottom of the stems okay that's all gone another bit of tape just roll that off on the bottom so it's gone around bottom edge, bring it up, snap that bit off. So I've had a little tweak around with it, pulled all the flowers into place, making sure I like the layout of it and the look of it. The next thing for us to do is just to cover the handle. So I'm taking my ribbon, And I will use my hot glue gun just to pop some glue up the top there. Attach the ribbon, roll it around. More glue down the stem, hand on me, and just roll that around some glue along the bottom there pinch that in Tiny bit more glue there. Wrap that around. So there. 
and give a press. Just tie that at the top. Tie in a knot. Same for the other bit. And then to go under the dress we've got the petticoat, so I won't show you how to make that but that's basically exactly the same as you would make a normal poly petticoat, longer in length but without the lace trim on the bottom. So that just gives it a little bit more oomph under the dress. I mean you could always add some net on there as well if you wanted to just to give it a little bit more of a, um, a puffy out effect. So yeah, so that's the, the petticoat which goes underneath. So there we have it. What a beautiful ensemble. I mean, what little girl wouldn't be happy with having her Polly Dolly dressed in such a glorious wedding dress like this? So yes, I think you'll agree it's pretty, uh, pretty spectacular. So she's got a gown, she's got a little posy, she's got a veil, and she's also got her little hair clips. She's also got her little sister Dolly Dot, and she's gonna be wearing a flower girl dress, so I'll show you that next. And so finally, my lovelies, here is the same pattern, but a reduced size for Little Dolly Dot. So here she is with her little flower girl dress. So it's exactly the same as Polly's wedding dress, but in a smaller version. So the underskirt has got the frill, um, and it's got the poly cotton. The overskirt is obviously in the satin. I've just um, done an overlock edge there and hemmed that up for the um, overskirt, she's got the little bow on the back, exactly the same, lovely little puff sleeves, so yeah this is the small version for Little Dolly Dot. So the beauty about this one pattern is you can either make the wedding dress or you can make the flower, uh, the flower girl dress. So Little Dot's um, pattern, she can have a wedding dress and a flower girl dress and Polly's pattern, she can have her wedding dress um, or she can have it made in satin and it will be a flower girl dress. So yeah, real good versatile little pattern that you can make two different um, designs from. And of course Little Dot's got her small little bouquet, her small little posy, and she's got a little headdress. I haven't put that on a clip yet. I just put that into her hair. <laughs> um, so yeah. So yeah, I hope you agree. Lovely little pattern and um, you know something that every girl would love to have in her dressing up box for her dollies. So thank you for watching my lovelies, I know it's been a really long video but I did have so much to get in, what with the dresses, the dress and the posy and the hair bands and the veil, so yeah, so uh, it should give you a lot of help when you purchase the pattern, um, you'll have all the instructions to look at there in the pattern piece but then you've also got this video to uh, help you along as well. So see you all later, bye!